There we go. Let's see. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Dana Scheider. I'm with the Cucumber Core team. And if you don't know what that means, you will within the next 20 minutes. Welcome to a beginner's guide to open source. Most of you are probably at least somewhat familiar with the concept of open source software, but you may lack some context that you would need to get involved properly. So what I want to do tonight is demystify what open source is, how open source projects and communities work, open source etiquette, and all the other information that you'll need to start making your own contributions to open source. So like I said, I'm going to start out by going over what open source software is and the basic mechanics of keeping projects running. A lot of us as Ruby developers have already worked with numerous open source projects, for example, Rails. Um, once I go over that, I'll go into a little more detail about the hows and whys of contributing to open source and then go into more detail about getting your first PRs accepted, what kinds of contributions you can make, those kinds of things. So what is open source software and how does it work? According to opensource.com, which I had never heard of, um, open source software is software with source code that anyone can inspect, modify, and enhance. Even though I hadn't heard of opensource.com, that seemed like a reasonable enough definition to me. Um, but it doesn't exactly clarify a whole lot for somebody who doesn't already know the lay of the land in open source. When it says anybody can inspect it, modify, or enhance it, what does that really mean? Do you, who do you request it from? Where do you get the code? Um, who is it that's actually releasing the software? If anybody can, in, can inspect it, modify, and enhance it, how, how do those cats get herded? Um, so as far as where the source code is hosted, um, you can find the source code for most open source projects on GitHub. Um, some, some projects have their code elsewhere. Um, Bitbucket is one option, there, but there are definitely a lot of, a lot of oddball projects. I'm going to focus on the most common ones that are hosted on GitHub, and that includes most of the major Ruby projects you can think of. Um, Rails, RSpec, Minitest, um, Cucumber, of course, uh, Aruba, and C, uh, GLI, Thor. Basically, basically anything that you're going to want to contribute to as a Ruby developer is there on GitHub. Open source projects are licensed using an open source license. Some of the most common ones are the new public license, the MIT license, and the Apache license. Um, the details of why those get used is a little bit out of scope for this talk, but the gist of it is that it has to do with, with the maintainer's commitment to keeping the code base public and their commitment to requiring projects that use the code to also be open source. Um, community contributors, that means you, contribute code and documentation and sometimes other things to the projects. Um, sometimes projects are sponsored by for-profit or non-profit organizations. Um, one example of a non-profit organization that funds a lot of open source is the Mozilla Foundation. An example of a for-profit company that that funds open source is Puppet right here in Portland. Um, Puppet provides a great example of something else as well, which is an open source product that functions as a free tier of proprietary software. Um, that has some interesting implications for the open source projects as well, but I'm not going to go into that right now. So let's talk about open source maintainers, because I love to talk about myself. Um, most well, I have not met an open source project that did not have one or more maintainers. Maintainers are a compulsory part of an open source project. And that's because um, a certain amount of work needs to get done. Somebody has to curate the project. Somebody has to, um, somebody has to inspect quality on community contributions. Somebody has to 
set a direction for the project. And it is the maintainers or the core team of maintainers that, that do that job. Um, most maintainers are volunteers. I'm going to reiterate this many times over the course of the next 20 minutes. Most maintainers are volunteers. Most maintainers are doing this for free in their spare time. I'm no exception. Um, many core teams do have lead maintainers who are um, primarily responsible for the, for the end decisions on things and who coordinate most of the work. Um, not always the case. And many maintainers are also the original authors of the software in question, especially when you get to smaller projects. It's always the original author that's maintaining it. So what do the maintainers do? Maintainers meet to decide on the future direction of the project. Um, maybe, for instance, with Cucumber, Cucumber is an opinionated framework, and we just decided that we wanted it to become more opinionated. So we had to get together and sit down and decide what opinions we wanted it to have and how we wanted to enforce them. And then we created issues to support that. Uh, we also prioritize work. Um, in practical terms, that means doing a lot of the work that we've identified as high priority and collaborating on that in a focused way as a team. Uh, maintainers make the unglamorous contributions, the, the updates so that the next version of Ruby does not break the gem, that kind of thing. We help community contributors make their PRs. We vet the PRs that are submitted. Um, sorry, for those of you who may not who may not know this, the, a PR stands for pull request, which is what you open on GitHub to submit code to an open source project. Um, so maintainers vet the PRs, um, answer questions. With any luck, maintainers also enforce a code of conduct. Um, and once again, maintainers usually are doing all of this in their spare time for free. So. How and why would you want to contribute to open source? There are a lot of options here. Um, and speaking from personal experience, I can say that open source contributions are an excellent way to get started in software because you don't have to have a resume to make open source contributions. Um, you can, if, if there's a contribution that you think you can make, you can go ahead and make it, and nobody is going to make you pass an interview. Nobody is going to make you um, go through any kind of screening as long as your contribution is good and you adhere to the code of conduct. Um, once you do that, your contribution then can function as a public portfolio. So you can, so you can point prospective employers to your, to your public GitHub and say, look, these are, these are the changes that I added to RSpec. And I guarantee you that even if the changes are small or if they're just to documentation, that's going to make a positive impression. Um, in a lot of cases, working on open source will allow you to work with senior developers on major projects. That's a huge benefit to people who are just getting started or to people who are working in a contractor capacity where they may not be working directly with senior developers. It's a really great way to learn. Uh, finally, you can improve or add features to things that you're working on, uh, to software that you work with on a regular basis. And that's both really rewarding. It enables you to learn new skills, but it also makes the software itself easier for you to personally use on your other projects. Finally, making open source contributions can be really fun and rewarding. So I encourage everybody to give it a try. So what do you contribute? The most obvious contribution that you could make is a new feature. And that's extremely daunting to a lot of, of beginning contributors, which is just one of the reasons why I don't recommend it as a first contribution. The other options include bug fixes, code refactors, test coverage is a big one, documentation changes are a big one, and fixes for typos or things like that in either documentation or code or um, comments, that kind of thing. All of these are, all of these are much appreciated, and things like documentation changes and test coverage, as well as refactors, might just be appreciated the most. 
um, because those are some of those unglamorous contributions I was talking about that the maintainers otherwise have to make. And since we're doing all of this in our spare time for free, those often just won't happen unless a community contributor steps in and makes them. So it's a great way to get your feet wet and also make a contribution that's going to be really valued. Um, so getting started. The first thing that you want to do to make your open source contribution is to identify some open source projects that you're interested in. Anything on Ruby gems is going to be open source. So if you're so if you look at your default Rails gem file, you'll find a convenient list of open source Ruby projects that you could consider contributing to. Um, any gems that you use regularly are going to be by and large open source. So that's a good place to start. Once you get started, I forgot to put this in the slideshow, but the first thing that you're going to want to do is find the repo and go through the docs that are there, like the readme. And some, some projects will also have a contributing.md file that will give you information about how to contribute, what the rules are for contributors, anything that contributors need to know. That's a great thing to read. Um, browse issue reports. I strongly recommend starting with issue reports when you go to make open source contributions. Those issue reports will give you an idea of what people are reporting that the project needs, and you'll also get to see uh, some, some issue reports will be made by maintainers, so you'll see what kinds of functionality the maintainers themselves are requesting, what kinds of bug fixes they've identified um, as work that needs to get done. And then you also will be able to see their comments on other contributors' issue reports. So that'll give you a really good idea of how you can best be helpful. Once you've read through some of the issue reports, you may have by then found a contribution you could make. You may have found a one-line bug fix that has to get done, in which case you can skip the next step. Um, but if that's not the case, or if you have an idea for a new feature, if you've found a bug, a bug to report, you can file your own issue report. I strongly recommend filing an issue report if there isn't one already for the contribution that you'd like to make. This can be something as simple as need to update docs about such and such functionality. Um, you, the thing that we don't want to happen is, is we don't want you to be like the person that I had to deal with last week who put so much time into making a PR that just was not consistent with the direction Cucumber was going. So they put in all that work and we had to reject it. Um, that's not my favorite part of being an open source maintainer and it surely is not their favorite part of being an open source contributor. So always file issue reports. And when you file your issue report, be sure to mention that you're interested in making a PR. Much appreciated. If maintainers are not friendly and helpful, despite your being friendly and helpful to them, Move on to a different project. Do give maintainers time to respond. Since we're doing this in our free time for free, um, sometimes life gets in the way of responding. If it's just slowness, that's less of an issue. But if people are actually rude or discourage you from participating or are dismissive, just move on to a different project. There are plenty of core teams that will be happy to have your contributions. Um, seek input, input from the maintainers. The fact that maintainers are volunteers should not deter you from using them as resources to ask for help when you're making your contributions, um, ask for input on implementation. Any questions that you have can be directed at maintainers, and most maintainers will be happy to help. Um, they can also inform you about other requirements, such as if there are compatibility considerations, maybe the change that you're wanting to make or the refactor that you're imagining doing will break Ruby 2.0. And so that's why they haven't made it yet. And they can let you know that. They can let you know if there's a Ruby style guide, if there are security concerns. If you're working on, say, like Nokagiri, you might have some security issues affecting various aspects of 
the, of the code and the maintainers can let you know about that kind of stuff. They can also let you know if there's a contributor licensing agreement. A CLA is an agreement that all contributors to some open source projects have to sign, um, delineating what their rights and responsibilities are as contributors. I recommend reading the fine print if you're asked to sign a CLA, because some CLAs contain fine print stipulating that your contributions may be taken closed source in the future. So unless you want your contributions appropriated by a for-profit company to sell their product, read your, read your CLAs closely. So I want to go into the do's and don'ts of open source contributions. Um, do contact maintainers before making a PR. You always want to double check with the maintainers that what the PR that you're thinking of making will be, will be accepted by the project. Um, when you are requesting a new feature or bug fix, if you possibly can, always offer to make a PR. It's when you're not, when you're not offering to make a PR, you're asking the maintainers to do extra work. So keep that in mind. Um, do ask maintainers for help. There are, there are always the maintainers who are jerks, but there are a lot, a lot, a lot of maintainers who will really appreciate your contributions and will really appreciate being asked for help. And some will even pair with you. I've actually included at the end of this slideshow a list of open source projects that I know to be friendly to beginners as well as to underrepresented contributors. Um, by the way, women, people of color, uh, LGBT folks, um, all of these groups are much less represented in open source than in the tech industry at large, and that's really saying something. So the projects that I'm going to most recommend are ones that I know to be friendly to both beginners and underrepresented contributors. Um, do give maintainers time to respond or review to your issue reports and PRs. Um, Sometimes it can sometimes it can take a while. It can take a few weeks sometimes for for maintainers to answer questions that either are more time consuming or are more trivial. So so keep that in mind. Finish the PRs you start, keeping in mind that it's perfectly okay to ask for help at any point in the process. So don't don't be shy about telling maintainers that you're stuck on something and need their help to move forward. Finally, do keep PRs focused on a single issue. So if you find a typo in the documentation and you find a one-line bug fix, submit a PR for the bug fix and a PR for the typo. That way, the change log can be updated in a much cleaner way. Um, so that, and that makes it easier for maintainers to know if a bug gets introduced exactly at what point it was introduced to the code base. Don'ts. Don't demand changes without offering to make a PR. You can request changes without, make, without offering to make a PR, but do it with the knowledge, like I said, that what you're asking for in that case is for somebody else to do additional work in their free time for free. Um, don't make a PR without asking maintainers if they'll merge it. Um, you just don't want to take the chance that you're going to spend all of that time and effort figuring out how to make the contribution you want to make to the project, only to have the maintainer say, no, that's not what we're looking for. Um, don't avoid asking questions for fear of looking stupid. Um, how do I make a pull request on GitHub? Great question. Um, any sort of question like that, uh, any kind of question about the mechanics of things, of how GitHub works, what do I do with my fork of the repository, getting set up, um, at least, at least in Cucumber, our maintainers are happy to help, and there are a lot of projects that have equally friendly maintainers. Um, don't tolerate rude or dismissive maintainers. Like the maintainers, you're doing this work in your spare time for free. And so respect is a two-way street. If a maintainer is rude or dismissive to you, know that there are plenty of other maintainers who will be appreciative and go and find them. Finally, and I'll go into this more in a minute, don't fork the repo if, if your contribution is not accepted. Um, that's a big open source no-no. Etiquette. 
So the, the first point in etiquette is, and this is, this is probably starting to, starting to grind into your head by now, everyone on open source projects is working for free. That's not quite true, but assume that anybody that you're working with is working for free. Um, if you want something, offer to help out with it. Um, and that includes, even if you don't have the time or ability to make a PR on something, be available to ask questions. So if you, f if you file a bug report and you're not able to provide a fix, do make sure that you answer any questions the maintainers have about what your situation is, where you found the bug, that kind of thing. Um, give the maintainers time. Don't fork repos. Um, so this, this happens sometimes. Um, the, the one that I best, re I best remember is the Node.js, IOJS split um, happened when some people forked a repo. Um, forking, forking a repo is a major event in the, um, in the lifetime of an open source project. If you want a new feature on your software and the maintainers reject it, Probably forking is not the right answer. You can you can create some hack on your in your local project to provide the functionality that you need. You can even have your own private version of a gem. But forking the repo is a decision for, generally speaking, senior developers who are deeply involved in a project. Um, ask nicely for help. That's just that's not even open source etiquette. That's just that's just plain old etiquette. Just don't be a jerk to people. They will probably not be a jerk to you. Do adhere to codes of conduct if they exist. And if there's n not a code of conduct for the project that you're working on, A, suggest that they add one, and B, adhere to the contributor covenant, which um, Ada Emke has kindly put together to, um, to provide a consistent code of conduct for various communities. Um, and I have a link at the end that, for where you can check that out. So here are the here are some resources. Um, the recommended projects. Um, these are these are some projects that I know are beginner friendly and are friendly to underrepresented contributors. Um, I in particular recommend Bundler. Andre Arco is amazing with beginning contributors and will be happy to help you out and pair with you and do and you know do help you out with anything that you need um, cucumber um, cucumber we have an extremely friendly lead maintainer who's de facto lead maintainer who is very helpful and was really helpful with me when I got involved in the project um, JSON test data and Rambo are smaller projects, but I own them, so I know that I'll be friendly to people. Um, and let's see. We have more open source Ruby projects here. You can, I mean, and like I said, if you have a gem file, open it and read down the list. And you have a list of open source Ruby projects right there that you can look into. Um, and then finally, further reading. Um, this, I, when I tweeted about open source projects that are friendly for beginners and underrepresented contributors, um, your first PR came up again and again and again in the mentions. Um, and, and I'm also including a link to Free Code Camp, which is a JavaScript, um, which is a JavaScript project and Contributor Covenant, which is Ada M. Keys, um, code of conduct, kind of base code of conduct for a variety of projects. So hopefully, hopefully you'll, you all now have a better idea of where you can get started and what kind of contributions you can make to open source communities. Um, I'd like to open the floor to questions. Does anyone have any? Yes. Yes, yes, that's that's correct. So 
The question was, um, the question was, when I say don't fork the repo, do I mean don't fork it at all or don't create a fork that becomes its own project? And I mean don't create a fork that becomes its own project. Um, creating a fork is a necessary part of making a pull request and that's, uh, and that's not a problem. It's when you turn it into its own separate project that it becomes an issue. Anybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cucumber has Gitter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a good point. There are IRC channels, and th those will usually be referred to in the README of a given project or in contributing.md. You can you can look at that and see if there's a Slack channel or an IRC channel that you might lurk on and see what people are talking about. Any other questions? Uh, how often have you run into code of conduct issues? Never. Um, the, only, the only code of conduct issue that I'm aware of happened at Cucumber happened to me before we had a formal code of conduct. Um, and I just ripped him a new one, and it was okay. But, um, <laughs> but um, and so, all right. Anybody else? Great. Thank you. <laughs>